Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So Nerf has made quite a few interesting sniper rifle blasters in the past. I mean, they've made the Roblox Viper Strike, and they've made the, uh, the Fortnite BASRL, and they've made the, um, the Raptor Strike. <laughs> but arguably one of the more interesting sniper rifle blasters that they've come out with Watch as I casually just pull this out of my inventory, is the Mega Centurion. <laughs> I love how this has become a joke of me magically hiding stupidly big blasters behind my back somehow. But uh, yeah, this blaster has been hated by so much of the Nerf community that it's rare to find somebody who actually appreciates this thing at all. Why is that? Let's find out. <laughs> So the Centurion was a 2013 release in the Mega Series and was actually the first blaster that started the Mega Series. And what the Mega Series is, is simple. It shoots these things, which are Mega Darts, which is exactly the same thing as a 50 caliber foam dart, but twice as big. Literally, you can fit 50 caliber foam darts inside of these darts, and they are incredibly fun, but kind of expensive and hard to get your hands on nowadays. Well, not that hard, but you get the point. They're kind of expensive. And this blaster came out being a big, heavy sniper rifle. So how did it do it being a sniper rifle? Well, let's start with the design and find out. My gosh, this thing is so good looking. Whether it's the Blue Sonic Ice version that I have here or the original Red Mega release, this is an amazing looking blaster and you will never be able to change my mind. Look at this. This is not just a sniper rifle. This looks like it came from Star Wars. Like, you know, the, the big, like, heavy, like, like, artillery cannon with the big tripod that they mount and they shoot, like, giant lasers at super long ranges and it blows up ships and stuff? That's what this looks like, and this is the vibe that I get from it. It is such a big, good-looking blaster from both sides. The only thing they didn't copy was the Mega logo and the white stripe that is seen on this side, but everything else, including the Nerf logo, Centurion, and N-Strike Elite, is on both sides. So I will give it a pass there, though they really could have put the white stripe, and I think the white stripe would have made it look a lot better on both sides. It still looks pretty good, and I think that this is definitely one of the nicest looking blasters ever, even though if you just look at it, you can see that mine is taking quite a bit of battle damage. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster features a main grip, no foregrip, but I, I, I make one anyways, and a stock. The main grip is so good that I don't even know what to say about it. This is what you call a grip. It's huge. It feels like a rival blaster's grip. It is actually super comfortable, rounded from all sides, and there's no details that stick out and jut into your hands. What it does have is a finger trial and a very nicely designed thumbhole stock that I honestly don't mind at all. As for the stock itself, it could be a little bit longer, but overall, I think it's a pretty good length. And it is one of the comfortable, this is one of the most comfortable stocks I've ever seen. The Centurion's ergonomics are notoriously good, and that also goes on to the cheek rest, which is just this flat area right up here. It's very smooth to put your cheek on, and honestly, I love holding this. I love shouldering this blaster so much. So how does this blaster work? Well, first of all, this is the Centurion six round magazine. Really quick disclaimer, if you buy this blaster and you take the magazine out and you don't make a face when you first see this mag, you are soulless. You are actually heartless. You have no soul, no personality, nothing. There's something actually wrong with you if you don't make that face when you see this magazine because this is a notoriously gigantic magazine and it's hilarious to see people's reactions when they first get this out. But you take the magazine and you just shove it in. You don't have to prime the blaster at all. Then you pull this bolt handle all the way back and then just shove it all the way forwards until it clicks and then you can fire once. What a trigger pull. Yeah, this thing is very interesting to say the least once you pull the trigger. Let's talk about what just happened. The prime of this blaster is absurdly long and beyond buttery smooth. It is so good feeling that it can be comparable to the twin shock or the rough cut. And pushing it forward, it's just so smooth and buttery and it just goes chap when it hits the front position. As for the trigger pull, it doesn't move at all. And then when you pull it, 
it lets you know this blaster is reverse plunger. And while that seems like a really stupid idea, it actually works in this blaster's favor, even though that does mean you really can't mod the blaster. You genuinely can't mod this blaster much. I don't really care though, because of how fun it is to pull this trigger. When you pull the trigger, everything slams around. Watch. This smashes forward and then smashes back super fast and super aggressively, and I love it. I love the way this thing works so much. I cannot get over just using this. Oh my gosh, it's fun. And as for the mag release, it seems like it, it doesn't work because like, what the heck, there's two catches on there. You put the mag in, you can't get it out. It doesn't line up. You can't pull it out because it's too big. But the thing is, if you hold the blaster like this, you can do this. And that works because your hand is now in the center of mass of the blaster and you can comfortably hold it up while bracing it against your shoulder with the front of your index finger pushing against the mag release so you can effortlessly load in a new mag. And it takes a little bit of getting used to to figure out the exact placement of this mag, but honestly, it just takes a couple minutes to get used to and then you can easily reload this blaster without even thinking about it. It's a pretty cool system, and I think that it actually works very well for this blaster. Let's do a firing demo. So the Mega Centurion, what do I think about it? Do I think that this thing really deserves the hate that it got over the years? Even up to this day, there's still a lot of people that really don't like it. Well, does it successfully manage to be an awesome looking, feeling, and working sniper rifle with tons of personality that shoots a really stupidly big dart just for the sake of being fun and have a very fun, good feeling mechanism while doing it and actually exceed upwards of 80 FPS out of the box? Yes, that is exactly what the Centurion does. Mod potential it does not have, but stock potential... Oh my gosh, this thing's awesome! Coop led me to believe that the Centurion sucked for years, and it was only after I actually got this thing that I realized... Oh my gosh, this thing's so cool! It's so fun, it's so satisfying to shoot. Whether you're shooting it like a traditional sniper, like down close to the ground with a bipod on it, it does come with a bipod, but it does not come with a stock or a scope for some reason. But whether you're doing that, or you're just running around playing with it as a sort of mega retaliator of sorts, this thing is fun, and it is genuinely one of the best blasters that I have seen come out of the Mega series. Mega didn't have very many war practical blasters. I'd say that this, the Roto Fury, and the, uh, uh what was the thing called? The, uh, the Megalodon? It's sitting right there. I don't know why I could think of what it was called. Those three are pretty war practical, as well as maybe the Magnus or the Cyclone Shaw. But other than that, there just weren't very many war practical Mega Blasters. I definitely think that this is, ironically, one of them. Even though the blaster is huge, it's a magazine-fed Springer. It's pretty hard to go wrong with that. And the only way that you could reasonably make this thing better is if the barrel was removable and you could turn it into a reasonably sized, like, Retaliator-style blaster. Or even something like an Alpha Trooper-style thing. You can't really do that with the Centurion, but I love it anyways. I do believe the Centurion is still available on Amazon, though not in the blue version that I have here. So if I do see a link on Amazon, I will link you guys it in the description below. If there isn't a link, just check eBay or Blaster Barn or other retailers to see if you can get your hands on one of these if you're interested in getting one. They also tend to show up at thrift stores a lot of the time, but hilariously, not usually with the mag. So with all that said, thanks for watching. Bye.